Hello grade 7 and 8, digital 4D art. Today we are looking at the pop art of Andy Warhol. Um, Andy Warhol was a prolific artist um, that changed the way a lot of people viewed art in the 1960s and we are looking in particular at his um, Marilyn diptych work today and how he used the art of silk screening and the art of repetition. But because we are, so Andy Warhol did uh, most of his work silk screening, um, which at the time was uh, kind of a new artwork. Now it seems quite old, but at the time, uh, how you would do the silk screening is you would make a big, like a frame out of wood, and then you would place a very thin piece of silk. And um, then you would tape out different parts that you didn't want the ink to go on in and then you would uh, slide the ink color over and then you would have different frames for different colors. So it was uh, an adap adaptation of the original woodblock printing um, that the um, Japanese Yukioyoi prints came from. So it, it was really um, an interesting art form and Andy Warhol used it a lot because when you do silk screening you doesn't have to be an original work of art you can actually use photographs a lot because you can um, create the blocks of the different colors and then you can create a one layer with the details of the photograph on top so we're gonna look at this diptych and in order to do this activity it's actually quite simple just kind of like a brief introduction to get us started with the iPad and how things work what you're gonna need is you're gonna need your photos and your camera on your iPad and uh, you're gonna need to take um, a photo of yourself hopefully your face um, could be a selfie you could get your friend to take a portrait you're also gonna need keynote hopefully you've used keynote before and we're gonna use it to display images and then another app that you may want to use I use in this example is called Snapseed. Snapseed is an app um, that helps you develop your photographs so if you have another app that works the same way please go ahead and use it. I use Snapseed for uh, changing the contrast and the brightness and the light and the dark and added, adding interesting filters to my photograph. It doesn't change your photographs, it just enhances your photograph. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, you have all of those, at least your photos and your keynote on your iPad. You may have Snapseed or another photo editing app and you have taken a photo or two that you can use for this project. Okay, so what you're gonna do is when you go to your iPad, you're gonna open up your photos and all your selfies or portraits will be there waiting for you and you're going to open the one that you think is most interesting for this project okay maybe I take a lot of selfies but it's so easy with digital it's just like five snaps okay yeah that's a good one that'll work so all you have to do is when you choose your photo at the right hand top of the screen there's a little thing that little button that says edit so click that and then all you have to do is go through and change the filter um, to something black and white and there's a lot of different options for black and white um, choose one that you think is most interesting that's it and then save it and then you're good to go for the next step however because we're kind of being inspired by Andy Warhol's prints and his prints look a little bit aged and they look um, a little bit uh, they've got some noise on it they've got some interesting textures you may want to experiment just to try and see if you can make your black and white photo more interesting a few more textures so what I did is I uploaded it now into Saps, Snapseed so I've opened Snapseed and when you open Sa Snapseed oh god that's so hard try and say that three times fast snap seeds that snap <laughs> oh my goodness okay so find your image on snap seed and then open it up and then um, if you click on the bottom under tools of snap seed you get a lot of options to change um, contrast 
bright, light, saturation, um, shadows, highlights. Play around with that till you get... I, I'm looking for some sort of filter that will make the contrast really strong, but also I want it to look kind of aged. So that's what I'm playing with. I'm trying all the different filters. Oh, I like this one. This one's a nice one. That's kind of the effect I'm going for, but I kind of want some more texture on it. So I'm not sure. I'm just going to keep experimenting with some different textures and see what I can find. Um, let me see if I go through. Uh, okay, I guess I like that one. I'm going to save a copy of that one. But because I do like the the strong black and white, let's oh that's what I want. See the the lines on it make it look old. Okay, but I don't want the color, so I'm gonna have to change the saturation, play around with the contrast a little bit. Nope, not the color. Saturation. Oh, that's there. That's nice. That looks more like um, what I was kind of thinking, a little bit closer to Marilyn's diptych image. So I think I'm going to be good with this. I like this one. Um, so I'm going to save a copy of that. So that should appear in my photos. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Keynote. And as soon as it loads, I'm going to open a new project. And then I'm going to choose I always just choose the plain white screen that one works best for me you know that I like a nice clean screen so get rid of all the extra stuff on the top and then I'm just going to go to the top um, where there's a plus sign can I find it yes and if you click it says photos or camera and then all photos no where then I have to find where did I save my photos to? Oh, there they are. Okay, so then I just have to click the photo that I want and it will, boom, come into my keynote screen and then I'm just gonna resize it. So what I need to do now is I need to create a grid. Um, so I don't know if you have any genius ideas, but all I did, simplest way I could figure out is if you just push your finger down on the picture you get all these options and you can copy and then if you move your finger onto the screen somewhere else and you push it again you'll get an, all the options again and you can paste and then you can move your pictures um, where you want I want to try and see if I can make a grid fit perfectly on the screen I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to but let's see if I keep copying and pasting oh what did I do no, I don't want to comment. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. Okay. Uh, so, kind of, no. Maybe I'm going to have to go back and resize everything. Make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and voila, c'est fini. Um, what did I make? Six times three grid, kind of textury, kind of Marilyn-y. Um, at least that gets us started in the iPad, and hopefully you guys are pretty confident now using your photos, uploading images onto your screen in Keynote, and you've been able to figure out how to create this simple grid. And stay tuned for the next step okay here is the advanced option uh, totally open for everyone you can all try it basically you do need one more app you're gonna need another photo editing app because snapseed doesn't change the hue so I'm looking for a photoing photo editing app that changes the hue of the picture the one that I use which I am in love with is called Nlight. Um, you can find it on the App Store. It's kind of free in that when you download it, it's free. 
um, for quite a long time and then it will just give you these reminders that you, there is a subscription that you can pay for I haven't paid for it yet so for this project it should work really well if you don't have Enlight and you can't find it then by all means try another photo editing but the key thing you want to look for is something that will help you change the hue Okay, so when you open and light, all your photo choices appear at the bottom. Choose one picture that you think is interesting. And all I'm really interested right now is in the adjust tab on the side. And the first one that I check is the tools. And then I hit basic, which allows me to change the contrast and the brightness. Creating more contrast helps when we start changing the color. So I change the contrast so it's a little bit stronger. Go back to the tools and I check the color. And then I select the hue, which is what I want to change. And then at the top, you can kind of just slide your hand across and you can play around with all the hue. When you're done, you can just click the check button and then you save that photo and then um, just go back. The little arrow on the side says go back and um, it clears the last step and then you can change to another hue. Um, obviously my computer skills are faster than my talking uh, so I've made purple, I've made blue so I'm gonna go back I think oh I'm gonna make green um, save that go back and then what else should I make Purple, blue, green, maybe I will make, oh, I like the teal. I'm trying to find kind of like a yellow-ish. I, I don't think I have a yellow yet. Um, oh, I changed the temperature. So that kind of made it a little warmer, gave me an orange. So go ahead and experiment. Like there's, oh my God, there's like a thousand different options in this app. Um, I think you get the idea of where I'm heading with this. You just need to keep changing. I think maybe about four or five different hues will work well for what I for what I need you to do. So when you have all of those saved in your images, you're happy with all the different varieties of colors. Um, excellent. So then go ahead and get out of that app, go back into Keynote and you're going to add yourself a new screen and then we're just going to do what we already did so hit the plus sign and choose the photos and then the photos that you just made should be saved in your images which you will have to find where they at and there my photos are and then we just do what we did before, insert it into your screen, um, size it the way you want, uh, insert the next one, and then I'm just going to uh, kind of make a pattern, maybe rainbow type pattern, inserting all my photos. Okay, so if you want to be a little bit extra, you can then select all of your grid photos, group them together, resize them, go to the next screen, select all the colored pictures, group them together, and then copy them um, to the first screen, and then just kind of paste that and then resize them so they all kind of sit there um, centered in the middle of the screen and boom digital 4d 101 introduction you as an Andy Warhol grid how awesome are you